I'm at the Boeing Museum of Flight right now. We're going to take a look at some really impressive pieces of aviation technology here that mark points in history. One is the 707, the 727, the 747, the original 747 is here, and then the newest 787, in addition to a bunch of military planes that Boeing has been involved with over years. This is a really cool place. <laughs> Air Museum has on display large planes of significance in aviation history. It has the first Boeing 727, 737, and 747 jetliners, the first jet Air Force One, the only supersonic passenger jetliner on the West Coast, the Concorde, and the first of the most recent and highly advanced Boeing 787 Dreamliners. While the Concorde is not a Boeing plane, its significance in aviation history merits its sitting with these other large planes. The only supersonic passenger jetliner to have ever existed. No longer in flight, ferried people across the Atlantic for quite a long time. Amazing marvel of engineering, can go Mach 2. It's all based on physics, its shape, how it's supposed to perform, but it's incredibly beautiful at the same time like just a marvelous piece of artwork. Eventually it was taken out of service just because it was a lot of money to run and they had a high profile accident. What a marvel of engineering, especially considering it was the 1960s when this was designed and engineered. The first Air Force One on display was based on the Boeing 707, an early modern jetliner from the 1950s. So this is an Air Force One, a Boeing 707 from 1959. How amazing is that? It was in service in one form or another until the late 90s apparently. So these jets on this original 707 right here are sort of early technology jet engines. They're what are called low bypass ratio. It just means that there isn't a big outer region where the air turbines are pumping air outside of the central jet core. That technology sort of emerged a little bit later and the 747 that we're about to look at that was developed in the late 60s has those higher bypass ratio engines. This was very innovative technology when it was designed in the 1950s. If you consider the fact that aviation really only got started 50 years prior. Amazing. In 1959, when the days of propeller-driven aircraft seemed numbered, Three modified Boeing 707s were delivered to the Special Air Museum missions fleet called VC-137As. These aircraft were the primary transports for President Eisenhower and Kennedy. In 1965, the engines were replaced with new turbofans, thus changing the designation to VC-137B. This is cool, look at this, the communication station. How neat is that? And then the galley. Yeah. So this was kind of luxurious for its time. Wow. Check this out, this was like the meeting room. Oh, very cool. Wow, this is an actual 707 that was used by the President of the United States back in 1959, 1960. Wow, 
check that out, typewriter. <laughs> How awesome is that? Aft galley, that's neat. That's very cool in there. Okay, so next we're gonna go over and we're gonna look at the 727. So this is the 727. This is another remarkable early jet plane and it also has low bypass ratio engines. It have three of them. And this plane was really cool in the fact that it was designed to be able to land in all kinds of sort of crazy and harsh landing conditions. It was a real workhorse. Boeing followed the success of its 707 jetliner just six years later with the versatile 727. The three engine airliner was made for flying short routes and able to operate from smaller runways than the 707. Boeing built more than 1,800 of these trijets over 22 years. The company stopped building the 727 in 1984. Other manufacturers have also stopped building three engine airliners, making them an increasingly rare sight. Oh, that's very neat. Let's go inside and take a look at that. So this is the interior of the 727. So when we go inside the 747, we'll notice how much larger it is and how that size was really almost a shocking thing when the 747 was introduced and while this was still heavily in service. So this is the kind of plane that people generally accepted was two or three seats on either side of an aisle. Wide body planes began to change that. Behind me here is the original 747 that was developed and all the 747s after were based on this thing. Here's the famous staircase from the 747. It was so large, it had an upper deck, they needed a staircase for it. How cool is that? Here's a model of a double-decker variant when they were developing the 747. They considered a double-decker. This is one of the models that was used to examine that possibility. The 747 was so large inside that it took people off guard. So the thing to note here looking at that original 747 is look how much larger it was than that 727 behind it, which was in operation at the time. That 747 would have seemed absolutely gargantuan to people. Amazing. This is some of the testing equipment that is still here because this plane was used for testing purposes. So I was talking about the low bypass ratio of those early jet engines, and this is what's called a high bypass ratio engine. This is a very modern engine right here. There's a central jet core, and then the fan blades are huge, and there's an outer ring where air is simply thrust through at incredibly high velocities, as a traditional propeller would to simply thrust air through the outer ring. So when you look at the fan blades, they've got this very curvy design to them. And when you compare them to the fan blades on that original JT9D on the 747, which are very sort of flat and straight, you can definitely see that they've figured out air form technology and how to make air flow around these as efficiently as possible. And those fan blades are some of the most highly engineered pieces of technology around. They're formed from a single metallic crystal. And that's the only way that they can make them maintain the kind of structural integrity they need to support the stresses that they're under. So that engine right there on the 787 is capable of producing 115,000 pounds of thrust. When we swing around here and we take a look at that original 737 over there, the original 737 had low bypass ratio engines on them. And what's remarkable is that thing that engine only produced about 14,000 pounds of thrust. The original 737 was relatively small, so it could handle it. 
But when we swing around here and we look at this original 747 that had this new high bypass ratio technology, those engines eventually produced about 45,000 pounds of thrust each. Over the course of the past 50 years, engine manufacturers have been able to increase the efficiency and the power of these high bypass ratios dramatically. So one of the advances in these new engines is they're using this uh, chevron that they call it and that reduces noise and turbulence which makes the engine more efficient and also reduces just the noise profile so i'm walking up now to the 787 and we're going to go take a look at that so now on the 787 this is boeing's latest plane they are using a carbon fiber technology that makes the plane strong and very light. And one of the implications of that is that they can actually have larger windows because the fuselage is stronger. And so these windows are generally larger than you're gonna find in other planes. So the 787 is a medium wide body plane. The 777 is larger, but this still can move quite a lot of people. Right? Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I could be